Hey guys, it's Chris Hale with Driving in the Left Lane Lifestyle. You can also catch me over on Amp for Success on Facebook. I want to come and talk to you guys for a few minutes today because this morning I woke up to a series of events and some were positive and some were and could be considered very negative. And when you go through things, moments of stress, whether it's from related to your work, your family, your finances, or your health, or so many other things, it's easy for us to lose sight of who God is. Because when we forget who God is, we try to do a lot of things ourselves. And when we do that, it seems like we get a lot less done, no matter how much harder it is we're working. It just seems like we're gonna keep trying and trying, and it's like, you've gotta remember God is peace, God is love, God is forgiveness. God is something we will never understand or fully be able to explain because it, it, he created us. You know, it's like Pinocchio looking up at Geppetto. Yeah, he knows who he is, he understands, he takes care of him, but he doesn't get it, not on a real scale. And when you fathom in or factor in the fact that God has created the heavens and the universe, it's really different than just talking to someone next to you, even though it feels like sometimes you can talk to God and he's right there next to you. You know, and when we begin to accept who God is, one of the names that I've been reading about actually in a few different publications is Jehovah Shalom. And Jehovah Shalom, it's just like a, a sense of protection and peace. And it's like God's spirit is just going to watch over you. And by that name of God, it lets you see another part of him of how intimate and how much he loves us. How much that we are special unto him, even if everyone else has turned their back on you, he hasn't. You know, he's right there and it doesn't matter where you are or what you're going through. You know, a lot of people blame God for things that happen to him. The God that I know or have come to know, he doesn't wish harm or anything bad on anybody. But for those of us that go through struggles and have times where we have been tested by different things of this world, for those of us that keep the faith, yes, God will reward you for that, here and the next. You know, the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. He didn't come to play by the rules. You know, it doesn't matter what he has to do, what lie he has to create for you to think, speak, or begin to really believe and live by. But the Bible says even in God's shadow, like when he turns around, there's no shadow, there's no darkness by God. There's no other half like where it's just, he's good and bad. No, God loves us. You know, you, me, all of us, God loves us. And that might sound corny or a little Sunday morning school status from when you were a kid or whatnot, but truthfully, it's, it is. And without it, we won't make it through this life. We'll think we can because we're big and we're badass and we've done things. You know, I can sit in a room full of people who've killed people and we can have a good conversation. You know, there's not a whole lot. But when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter. God will watch over you because he sent his son. So no matter what sin you've committed, no matter what crime you've done, no matter what words you've spoken, if you fully accept him, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, those sins were forgiven before you committed them. Because he didn't die for you just now. He died for you a long time ago, which means he said then, there's nothing you can do that will make me close myself off to you. If you will but let me in, all you have to do is accept the fact that it's grace. You can't earn it, you will never deserve it, and you just, it doesn't make sense. But it's grace, and that's what God is for us. He gave us Jesus Christ to show us a better way, to remind us how he began this whole thing. We get so busy, we forget to take a Sabbath. And I'm not saying you've got to necessarily take Sunday off. But God designed us with the principle of rest. Whether it's work all day, sleep at night. Or sleep, work all night, sleep during the daytime. Sorry, I got tongue tied right there. But um, the thing is, is there's a period where you need to shut down and turn the computer off and not do anything. Spend some time with your wife, your kids, go do a hobby. Whether you're gardening, you scuba dive, or you skydive, or whatever it is you do. I mean, something that's for you. Read a book, take a few minutes, relax, shut the world off for a minute. But we get so busy, whether it's from bills or whether it's from going through a loss or whether we're dealing with this or dealing with that, that we forget because we think we can't afford it. But we really, what we really can't afford is to not obey God. 
You know, it's easy to think we cannot afford to skip on the world. The world's in front of us. God's asking us not to skip on Him by faith, and He's not always right in front of us because we can't see Him. You know, it's no different than watching the wind move, though. Those leaves in the trees, they move around. God's here. That's real, and that's legit. But you've got to have enough faith to make it through what you're going through, which means you can't let circumstances or conversations steer you away from the truth and the one true God. Because when it comes down to it, I can talk to a Muslim, I can talk to a Satanist. It doesn't really matter. I know what I know, and I know that I can listen to them enough to understand them, and then to try and tell them, look, guys, I, I get it, you believe in it, but I've got some real truth for you right here. But you've got to say it in a way that brings it about. You've got to represent Christ in all things. You know, he sat with the sinners and the tax collectors. He rescued the prostitutes. God did not care. He just said, accept my son. That's it. So if you haven't done that, I encourage you to take a moment and do that. And it ain't very difficult. All you've really got to say is, Lord Jesus, I know I've screwed up, but I really need you in my life. And I need a fresh start and a change starting today that's visible. And I need some faith so I can know you and get to know you. And then you get plugged into a church. It's real simple. It's simple steps. It's not complicated. I know when I got saved, it was a matter of I went to prison for seven months because my friend got, we got, we got arrested together, okay? And when we were arrested, the witnesses pointed some fingers and I took the blame for both of us and let him leave. And I went and served seven months for both of us. It wasn't even a big deal. But in that seven months, I stayed almost four years and I did 22 months in the hole. So I spent basically two years in an isolation cell for getting in trouble because I like to get in trouble, I guess. And getting out of that, February 11th, 2013, 10 days later, I had a DUI. I just lost four years and I was going back. I didn't ask God to save me from the trouble I was in. I didn't ask him to rescue me from where I was at. I just simply said, Lord, no matter how this goes, I'm going to follow you because this, I need your help to get through the mess I created and I can't do it alone. So if you'll lead me, I will give you the glory for every part of my life from this part forward. And that's why I don't care where it is, what it is, or how it is, you won't see me not give God glory for it. Even if it means I lose a business connection, a customer, I've had people tell me they won't buy from me because I'm a Christian. I've drawn a little fish on a brochure and a lady literally told me, I'm atheist, I think God is bull crap, et cetera, et cetera. And because that's your beliefs, I'm gonna tear this check up. I watched $700 get taken out of my hands. Oh well, <laughs> like I care. I'm going to heaven. Streets of gold, way better. Okay, it's like Super Bowl Sunday times extreme amounts extra. Okay, it's way better. And uh, so it didn't matter. I Admitted mean, at the moment, I was kind of like, crap, that sucks. But in reality, I knew it didn't matter because I wasn't changing my salvation for that. But you'd be surprised how many people will lose their salvation for that. You know, Peter denied Christ too, and he still was accepted back. He was the rock. You know, the original rock. But when it comes to it, so many of us will make a mistake and we just think it's over with and we can't go back to God. And that's your biggest mistake is believing the lie the devil put in your head because you forgot that he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Doesn't matter how he gets your soul. It just matters that he gets your soul. So what you need to do is realize the word of God is true. All the stories that people tell you don't matter. You can love them later. Right now, go get right with God and get loved by Him because right now you need that hope and restoration because you need that strength because God's telling you it's right here. It's right here. All you have to do is ask me to come in. It's not a game. It's not a joke. It's not something to pass by time or to get a thank you or a like. It's legit. This might be the only thing you hear today about God, but I'm going to be proud to be the one that brought it to you. Because I'm not ashamed of Christ and I won't be. I didn't care back in the day, but now, now it's a different story and it's a real battle and I'm not walking away from it. So God bless you and I really hope you find some strength in this. And if you leave me a comment to tell me how it helped you, I'd really appreciate it. Because sometimes when you put your faith out there, you are stepping out on a limb. And your words encourage me just like these words encourage you. So God bless you guys. I hope you have a great day and you kick ass and just win.